Hey guys, I'm out here in the Texas Hill Country to show you my RN50 sniper rifle. While I'm at it, you guys can enjoy a little bit of the scenery from the Hill Country. Alright, I know you guys are ready for the rundown on the sniper rifle, so I'll give it to you. I'll just start out with the barrel lengths first because they do come in different sizes. And by the way, I ordered this directly from the manufacturer at Serbu Firearm. You order it directly from the manufacturer. Make a small, like $200 down payment. It does take about a month or two months for them to manufacture the rifle but it's worth the wait. I know you can get anxious and wanting to go buy it right away to get it in your hands, but uh, trust me, it's just not worth it. This is the standard size that comes with the 29 inch barrel, and it is a one in 15 button barrel, but they do have four sizes. There's a 18 inch shorty, a 22 inch carbine, and then a bigger 36 inch barrel. But this is by far the most popular model. Anything shorter than the 29 inch barrel, you're going to feel the impact on it. The base of the model only includes from the muzzle brake down to the stock. It doesn't come with the stock or with the bipods. And of course, you have to add your own scope to it. It costs about 1100 bucks. That's what I paid for it. I paid about 1500 bucks total with the manufacturer stock and the bipod. You can put aftermarket stock and bipod on there if you want to, but I really wouldn't recommend it. This butt stock that comes with it has about an inch and a half pad on it, and it's heavy duty designed to hold up in the recoil for this rifle. And this bipod is very heavy duty and spring loaded, made out of alloy steel. The overall length of the rifle with the butt stock is 48 and a half inches. And the total weight with everything that I've got on it's probably about 22 pounds. The finish on the rifle is a magnesium phosphate and anodized. I've added the scope. It's a 50 millimeter Bushnell banner. I don't know if it'll hold up to that recoil, but I'm going to try it out anyway. Because you can spend $900 to $2,000 on a decent tactical scope. One of the first things you'll notice about this rifle, it's not a bolt action or a semi-automatic. But for $1,500, it's well worth the price. Very good quality rifle. They do have other models of the rifle. And I believe the bolt action is about four grand, and their semi-automatic is about nine grand. They're pretty nice looking rifles too. I just didn't want to spend that much on the rifle and I've been eyeballing this one for about a year until I decided to pull the trigger and buy it. I had to put this barrel adapter with the swivel on it and the stock strap to use with the sling that I got wrapped around my shoulders. This is just a sling for a 12 gauge shotgun, but it works out pretty well for the 50 caliber ammo. Let me show you the sling. I'm using the sling for the ammo because I don't want to be hauling around a heavy ammo can. I've got the ball rounds on here and a few tracer rounds on it. I'll pop up the ballistics info on the video. But 
this sling has two clips on the end that I can attach to the swivels. Well, it's too windy for me to fire any rounds out here. The wind gust is about 15 to 20 miles an hour, and it's not worth wasting the ammo for three to five dollars a round. So what I'm going to do is take you back to my garage, use a laser bore sight to get it sighted in at about 100 yards, and I'll be right back to wrap it up. I'll get back to that video here shortly, but I'm going to show you guys how I get this scope sighted in with the laser bore sight. And uh, while I'm at it, show you a little bit more gear. I've got some gear laid out that I'm going to show you guys. And I'll talk a little bit about the ammo and the scopes. But first, I'm going to prop up a little cheer for myself. I've got a C9 Celta small folding chair. It's lightweight and thin enough to put in my survival pack. I'm going to use it right now. It just folds out real simple like that. I just got my belt laid out that I talked about in the video earlier. There's my ammo can. I've got 50 rounds of the 50 BMG APL armor piercing incendiary. Bought it online at Gun Broker. It's hand loaded. I believe he said the grain was 639. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. I'm using American Eagle military grade. It's a 660 grain full metal jacket ball round. I've got about 30 rounds of that. Now for you guys that aren't familiar with the round, this is the ball uh, compared to the armor piercing incendiary. You can see it's just a plain bullet. And the API round has that silver tip on it. The ball round is used for marksmanship training, but in the military it's also used against personnel and lightweight vehicles. This API round has an incendiary explosive inside of it that explodes on impact. It's used against light armored aircraft and armored vehicles and on materials like brick walls and other types of structures. You can't use these out at the range. The ball rounds you can, but it depends on the range. Uh, a little difficult trying to find a place, but they're out there, usually the gun club. I use this Bushnell range finder. It's probably one of the least expensive, but it's a pretty decent range finder. I Mainly use it for hunting, but it comes in handy at the range, too. It does meters and yards. I've got a metal target that I use to sight in the scope with that laser bore sight. And I marked off a 100-yard distance with this Bushnell rangefinder. I've got a pair of CQB tactical gloves that you saw me wearing in the video out in the hill country. They are pretty nice. They fit well. And made with some pretty strong material. It's got like a hard plastic knuckles. I like the army green color to them. The only problem is is they're full fingered. But I like them. I have another pair that I like a little better. Because they've got the open fingers on them. They're a lot better when you're trying to use your hands. So you don't have to keep taking your gloves off
this is my ghillie suit that you see hanging here on the next part of the video I'll show you guys more of this with my sniper rifle and there's the barrel wrap for the rifle I don't have it wrapped as well as it could be but basically you can just fold the strings over like that it's planted in different colors with green uh, dark brown and a light tan probably don't see all the colors very well that's probably the best one that I could find with all the different types of terrain that I'm around. So let's get down to business. This is the sight mark, laser bore sight. I'm guessing it's about 30 or 40 bucks. And I use laser bore sights for all of my rifles. It's really good to use the laser bore sight to get your scope sighted in. Otherwise, you can waste a lot of money popping off rounds. Basically, just unscrew the cap. And insert your batteries. And you'll pop this into your barrel like you're loading the round. I bought this little rig. It's a scope adapter. You can basically just attach this to the eye relief on the scope and you tighten and loosen it by turning this knob in the back. So I'm pretty much a long shooter, guys. And these two pieces come in real handy whenever you're trying to get your scope sighted in because it can be frustrating when you're out there by yourself. You're firing off at targets and having no idea where they're going to hit. At least this is going to get you in close. And then you'll take it out to the range and get it on paper. And then start hitting your metals at the longer ranges. Alright, let's get down to business and get this scope sided in. I'm going to slide the phone in to the bracket. I'm swiveling this piece to the camera lens. I'm tightening down this nut to hold it in place. And to keep the phone from sliding, tighten down the nut to fasten the phone to the brackets. But before I put it on the scope, I need to show you guys the brake action on that rifle and the breech cap. This is a single load sniper rifle with the brake action, pop open like that. Here you can see it's got a breech cap. We just hit the brake action lever down here on the bottom. You load your ammo in. And put your breech cap on. And make sure that it's fastened down tight. It's ready to fire. But I've got the laser bore side in there instead. After you fire pop it back up, take off your breech cap and the round is usually going to be stuck in there if you do, you just use the cap of another round use it to pry out the round like that I'm ready to put the batteries into the sight, fore sight they don't last very long, so you need to make sure that you do it pretty quickly. And it comes with a little tube to put your batteries in. And put the cap back on. There's no switch to turn it on and off. The only way to turn it off is to unscrew the cap. I'm going to slide this in. Put that breech cap on. Lock it down. I 
and on the phone hit my camera button My bad here guys. You could obviously see the laser through the scope but I wasn't able to see the crosshairs very well through this scope under these light conditions at night. I wish I could have shown you the view at night but it happens. No worries though. I'll put the laser in and give you guys a shot of how this works anyway. And this is a zoomed in view on my phone camera. Yeah, I'm finally at the point of what I'm here to show you about sighting in the scope with the laser. It took a while, but I hope it was worth the wait, because I really wanted to show you guys the other tactical gear too. Now that street sign is the metal target that I've marked off at the distance, and I'm zoomed in on the camera here. The elevation and windage has already been adjusted to zero the scope with the laser on the center of the crosshairs. So that's a 100 yard BZO or battle sight zero. You can see how reflected the laser is on the metal target. So that helps you find the point of the laser easier through your scope to tune your elevation and windage. Once you've done that, then you're ready to take your first shot to begin the final BZO adjustments or head out to the range to get it on paper and move on to long range shooting. So don't take off yet boys and stay with me for a few more minutes because I'm tuning back to the beginning of the video to show you the ghillie suit and you won't regret it because it is badass. As always, I appreciate you guys joining me on my channel, and I hope you appreciated the view of the Texas Hill Country. It is some beautiful terrain, and you can see why I enjoy being out here. You guys catch up with me on the next video. I'm going to get this thing out to the range and get it busy out. Hopefully do some long-range shooting, see how well we do with that. But who knows, I just might hike it up to the top of that valley behind me and fire off a few rounds. Anyway, it was fun being out here. You boys take it easy.